It was not easy for the white man to build America. It was not easy for him to defeat our red brothers. And don't believe the hype. They didn't just walk in and blow away all the Indians. They lost the first two wars against the red man. The red man destroyed many of these Caucasians and left them hanging from trees, but they don't teach you that history. They don't want you to know how aggressively our red brothers fought against this beast for years and years. They had to subdue them and lie and trick them. It's not easy. There's a group of people in America known as the Mormons. How many of you have heard of the Mormons? Did you know that the Mormons believed that they received revelation? Their man received revelation right here in North America. Hmm. They believed that there was a great conflict between a dark people and a light people, and that the Indians were the descendants of this dark people, and that the Mormons' duty was to come and to reestablish the rule of the lighter people. How many of you knew that? Well, you know that the Mormons are a very strong religious community in America, aren't they? When was the last time you heard them called nuts? You don't. We have to think. We have to break the hold of this mass consciousness on us, brothers and sisters, so we can rise up and accept the true knowledge of God. The Mormons right here in Illinois, when they went out to Utah, they didn't take covered wagons. They didn't have covered wagons. They didn't have horses. You know how they got from here to Utah? They built six-foot wagons, hand carts, and they pulled these hand carts all the way across America to Utah. It takes work to build a nation, brothers and sisters. It takes hard work. It takes wrenching work and sacrifice to build a nation. But that's the only way we're going to get out of this situation. We have an example today of a man who has endured such sacrifice, who has paved the road for us to follow. And tonight, we will hear from our brother. Let us receive his words into our heart. Don't throw up your defense mechanisms. Forget about what Walter Cronkite and Ted Koppel said. Let your old English teacher go. Let all that history that they lied to you about, let it all go and accept what you hear from our brother, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. I would like to, at this time, brothers and sisters, present to you our sister, the wife of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a nurturer of the nation, a mother of the believers. Let us receive her with the respect and the honor that is due to her. I greet you in the greeting words of peace as I bring before you our beloved sister, Tainetta Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ir Rahman ir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah alone, the Lord of all the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful. And we, the black people in America, will never be able to thank Almighty God Allah enough for His sending and raising in our midst a divine leader, teacher, guide, and the exalted Christ that the world has been looking for in the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank both Allah and the honorable Elijah Muhammad for raising in our midst our brother, Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is standing in the position and standing in the place of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for a brief period of time. Let me explain what I mean. We came out tonight to hear the words of our leader and teacher, Minister Louis Farrakhan. And the subject that he's going to be dealing with tonight is a continuation of Sunday's lecture on domestic violence. Many of us here in this auditorium this evening have perhaps been the victim of some kind of domestic violence, whether it be on the women's side 
or whether it be on our brother's side, this issue is one of the most important issues that is facing all of us here in America today. This morning when I awakened, I had this verse that came to me very, very strongly from the Holy Quran. And it was the tree of Zakam. Now the tree of Zakam is mentioned in the Holy Quran. It is mentioned in the 37th surah entitled, Those Ranging in Ranks. And when it speaks of the tree of Zakam, it speaks of a tree that grows in the bottom of hell. And that this tree that grows in the bottom of hell produces, as it were, the heads of serpents. Now, where do we get a comparison or a parallel to this tree of Zakam in the Bible? We read in Genesis in the second chapter that there was a garden called the Garden of Eden. And the first domestic violence that we have in our record of history of the last 4,000 or 6,000 years took place in the Garden of Eden. That act of violence was performed by what we call Satan or the serpent. Is that right? The serpent was attached to a tree. And God had already warned both Adam and Eve in the garden not to partake of a particular tree in the garden that contained the knowledge of good and evil. But they were told that they could eat freely of all of the other herbs and the plants and the fruit of the trees in the garden. So what has happened, brothers and sisters, whether we look at it from the Holy Quran or whether we look at this story from the Bible, we are the victims of a 6,000 year history that began with Satan and the tempting of the woman and then the fall of man until today we have come to the actual brink of total annihilation and destruction. Not only are we facing a domestic violence in our homes and in the streets, but we should ask the question, what are the circumstances and the conditions that are, that are irritating and agitating this condition even more? If you look out around you today, we are breathing an atmosphere that is so polluted that within the next decade or the few years that are left of this 20th century, we will lose a large percentage of our people due to the pollutions of the air that we are breathing. That's right. We will also lose a large proportion of our people because they do not know the proper foods to eat. We will lose a large proportion of our people because the waters are polluted. The drinking water is polluted. The water that we buy that we think is purified in the bottles. They are now telling us that that water could be more polluted than the water that's coming out of the taps. Now look at the recent story in the White House. A group of specialists, doctors, are trying to examine what could be the causes that has produced this strain extraordinaire, not only with the president and his wife, but his dog. How about that? <laughs> his dog is supposed to have lupus. That's right. Okay. So they're all debilitated and actually falling apart because they believe that the source of this virus or strain that has affected the White House and the president, his wife, and their dog has to do with the drinking water. Now who is it, brothers and sisters, who has taught us how to eat to live? 
I ask a question. Elijah Muhammad. Who is it, brothers and sisters, that taught us the proper foods to eat? Who taught us how to raise and respect our women? And who is it, brothers and sisters, that taught us to be family again? To love one another and to respect one another and to come together in unity. Have we obeyed him? And what is the result? We are suffering the consequences that we have wrought by our disobedience and our disrespect of that great man who was among us for more than 40 years. And now, brothers and sisters, we are repeating history again because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad prayed that if Minister Louis Farrakhan ever went back, that means back out of the, the nation of Islam or was found other than himself, that he prayed that Almighty God Allah would go after him himself and bring him back. Is this what we have seen taking place? Is not Minister Louis Farrakhan standing on the post that Almighty Allah appointed for him? And how are we treating the leadership of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? Did you know, brothers and sisters, that during these last 13, 14 years, he has been gradually losing the strength to be able to physically deal with the enormous amount of traveling that he has done throughout America to try to awaken our poor brothers and sisters. And he says, I'm not an entertainer. He says, I'm not out there for a big show. That's right. He says, I go and I get thousands and thousands of people. Yeah, that's right, Brother Minister. Go ahead, teach us, Brother Minister. But when it comes to putting those principles into action, right. then we all fail. So all So all of the viruses that are out here and in here, okay, all of the evil that is spread near and far, if we are not careful, we will fall victim to this devil's civilization. No matter if we're dressed in a white dress or in blue jeans, do you understand? The subtleties of Satan are so great that the manifestation of the hypocrites and the disbelievers is going on among us. And we cannot judge a person just by looking at the way they dress. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad set the record straight. He said, whether you wear a long white dress or a short dress, Allah is not looking at how you are dressed, but he is looking into your heart. And then he pointed out in 1974 in his last Savior's Day address that there were angels that were with him. And when he pointed them out, he said, they are here to see whether or not you are a believer at heart. So now going back to where I began, Surah 37, the tree of Zakum, producing foul serpent heads. It says in the footnote of Malana Muhammad Ali that these leaves were like a pungent, undesirable, foul, filthy tasting food that Allah describes that would be the food of the hypocrites and the disbelievers in hell. Brothers and sisters, where are we? Are we catching hell? Yes, ma'am. What, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to just remain on the outside of this house, the only sign of light, the only sign of life, the only sign of divine unity? We need your help, brothers, not just to come, to sit, to listen to a lecture, to say, yes, that's wonderful, and then go back outside and join the masses of our people that are dying out there in the streets, but we have to pick up the role of responsibility. And we have to quicken the pace so that we also become helpers in the cause of Islam. 
because you are Muslims, brothers, whether you know it or not. You were born in the very nature of an humble and submissive person to the will of Almighty God, Allah. If it were not so, we could not have endured slavery for now 436 years. Now, we are the warriors of Muhammad, and we must take the proper stand because this government is going to be shaken to its knees. And as it is being shaken to its knees, they are going to try to come after us with everything that they have got to try to destroy us. They are going to try to get us in the water. They're going to try to get us in the food. They are putting things out there in the environment to help and aid in the pollution that is going on. And finally, as I close, those ranging in ranks contains, if you count the English letters, exactly 19 letters. And this number 19 has entered into the judgment of the world. That number one there represents the power of Almighty God, Allah. And standing beside a nine represents that he is about to destroy an old world. And when you resolve 19, you come back to unit again. Is that right? He's about to knock out a whole world. And those nine also represent the planets. And he is calling upon the powers of the universe to help him to fight in this battle against this beast. Do you want to know how we know it? What is the United States government planning in 1992 with their space program at NASA? They're, they are getting ready to make another probe into the planet Mars. But not just going up to Mars to take pictures like the Vikings 1 and the Viking 2 in 19. 76, they are going up there to settle down, to take and evacuate their people out of the planet Earth, they think, because their scientists have said that they have polluted and destroyed the planet and they're looking for a big nuclear holocaust. And they want to save some of their people and get up to the planet Mars. They're calling the project terraform or formation, meaning to bring back the green to the planet, which is going to cost billions and billions of dollars. But remember, the sign of the end of the devil and their rule is that they would reach out. God would allow them to peep into the heavens. But as they peep into the heavens, they would be followed by flames of fire. Now what? would these flames of fire have to do with Mars? What is Mars called according to their Western terminology? It is called the red planet. It is called the planet of war. Is that right? right. And they've got two satellite moons going around them. I believe one of them is called Phoebe and the other one, n th that's it. And it means terror <laughs> and fear. That's right. So that means, brothers and sisters, that our Savior Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, in case you didn't know, he had already made contact with life, human beings on the Mars, and had tapped in to the language of the people on Mars. He had photographed the people on Mars way before Viking 1 and Viking 2 landed on its surface in 1976. Why? Did he want us to know that he had made contact with the people on Mars? Because he said in this final confrontation against the enemy that he was calling on the planets and the civilizations on the other planets to aid him in this final battle against our enemy. So when you see Bush, NASA and the scientists keep shooting up their satellites and keep on these little secret missions probing into outer space. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said they're trying to get a landing base on the moon or on one of our nearby planets so that they can shoot back at the arsenal of what they believe is their destiny to come into a battle 
in the skies, and I'm referring to the mother's plane, the UFO phenomenon, which is the top secret of the United States government. And since 1976, they have been working secretly in the investigation of what they call alien civilizations in outer space. But they're just now telling us through the media of what they are planning to do. So let us wake up, brothers and sisters. We have a savior in our midst. And Minister Louis Farrakhan is receiving direct guidance from Master Farad Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to get us safely through the treacherous road that lies ahead. I hope and pray Allah that you have listened carefully to the words and the information that I have shared with you this afternoon and that you are ready to hear our beloved minister, Louis Farrakhan, who is very nearly going to join us here in this auditorium. Thank you very, very much for your attention. May Allah bless you and keep you in your strength, peace of mind, and contentment. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the best prayer that we can pray is that Allah will keep us in our right mind because the things that are coming down on this planet, in our communities, in our cities, is going to be so horrifying. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that in the Holy Quran, it says that it would turn children gray-headed. And we are seeing children gray-headed right now. Right. So brothers and sisters, Islam and this message that is coming from Mosque Miriam, from Minister Louis Farrakhan and all of his assistant ministers and helpers and laborers is for our salvation. Please, please, Keep up your attendance and come and be the helpers in this great cause. May Allah bless you and thank you for your attention. As-salamu alaykum. All praise is due to Allah. We thank Sister Tanetta Muhammad for her wonderful words and brothers and sisters. I pray that we, we drink them deeply in. Sister mentioned the UFO phenomenon. I want to point out that this year, Chicago is going to be the site of the International Symposium of the Mutual UFO Network. It's, out, it's going to be July 4th, 5th, and 6th out at the O'Hare Hilton. And I recommend that if you're able to, go on out there and listen to these scientists, Caucasian scientists, show their research on all the sightings of these planes that they have, not to mention the crop phenomenon, that they don't have any idea what's happening in their crops. All kind of things will be discussed, and if you're able to go out there, it would be a shock to them to see a bunch of black faces for a change. <laughs> Sister Dinetta, myself, and Brother Jabril were able to go last year down to uh, Gulf Breeze, where hundreds, literally hundreds of sightings have taken place, many of them documented on photographs and videotapes, and there were very few black people there. We went to one earlier in Germany, and we were the only black people there, although there were people from Japan, from Israel, from South America, all over the world. So if you're able to, please go out and see that. Now, Minister Farrakhan will be with us very shortly, but in light of the subject matter, I wanted to read this from Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 22 and if my timing is right when I get to the end of this Minister Farrakhan will be walking through the door please listen to this is there no balm in Gilead is there no physician there why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered remember the subject matter tonight balm medicine healing is there no healing for my people? What you hear coming out of the mouth of Minister Farrakhan with his mind lit with the inspiration of Allah through the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you must bear witness that it's a medicine. It is a bomb. It goes on to say, oh, that my head were waters and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men that I might leave my people and go from them, for they all be adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. Does it sound familiar? And, <laughs> and they bend their tongues like their bow for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. 
for they proceed from evil to evil. And they know not me, saith the Lord. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. And they will deceive every one his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies, and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them, for how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is, an, is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in heart he layeth in wait. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is our condition. This is our community. Tell me that it's not. This is how we live day in and day out. You can't trust your neighbor. Most of you don't even know your neighbor. Don't even knock on your neighbor's door. Afraid to knock on the door because you don't know what's lurking inside the door. Deceit rife throughout our community. Tell me it's not true. This is the condition God's people has been brought down into. But there is a bomb in Gilead. The book says, shall I not visit them for these things, saith the Lord? What does visit mean? Does that not mean, do you go there? If you say you're going to visit your relatives in Cleveland, what do you do, send them a postcard? Do you send them a book? You go there. The Lord is saying, shall I visit them for these things? Let us get in contact with the truth of the reality of the presence of the Almighty God who is among us today. And when you hear Minister Farrakhan speak, you're actually hearing the thoughts of God to his people. Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Brothers and sisters, as Sister Tanetta has mentioned, our minister has been working in this exposition of the truth for 13 to 14 years now. He's been working among us for almost 40 years now as a minister of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Some of you tonight have said that you just came out. And I wasn't being smart when I said, what took you so long? Because work has been going on, and we have ignored the work. As Sister said, our brother is, every time he speaks, he expends a part of himself that is not able to be recouped. He drains himself. He gives his life. Like a lamb on the altar, he sacrifices his health. Those of you who have been around him, you know it's true. But what have we done in return? We have to stop being weak, brothers and sisters. We've never been a weak people until white people got us. We weren't weak in, in what they call Africa. White people didn't come into you, brothers, and just start beating us up and making us slaves. They tricked us with deceit. They weakened us by taking out of us the truth of who we were. When they brought us to America, they had a system set up to drain us of our strength. What is our strength? Your strength isn't going to the health club. That's not your strength. Your strength is actually your belief in the almighty God, your knowledge of God. We got to get strong again. You are in the valley of decision, and you can't get yourself out of the valley of decision. You must make a decision. Whose side will you be on as the war of Armageddon becomes so visible that no soul will be able to ignore it? What side will you be on when the final attack on God's people in America is made? What side will you be on? Where will you be when the police no longer hide their vicious hatred of our people and they kill us wholesale in the street? What will you be doing? Will you be in your apartment cringing, wondering what to do? Oh, no. That's not where you'll find the FOI. We'll be busy doing our work. Where will you be? This is a blessing. In Noah's time, God was displeased. He was displeased with everybody but Noah and his family. We're being given an opportunity 
through listening to the word of God through Minister Farrakhan, through the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to make ourselves worthy of living into a new reality. This reality is through, y'all. America is through. Her economy is falling, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that when the dollar falls, America's gone. America is only an illusion, and if you peel back and look behind it, you'll see that it's like the set on a Hollywood stage. It's just being propped up. I recently drove out to Denver, and on the way there were tornadoes. We got out there, they had golf ball sized hail. Don't you see it happening in America? The only reason you're not able to make the connection with the destruction of Babylon is that you've not listened to the teacher who is right in front of your face. Brothers and sisters, let us not just listen tonight. We don't know when we'll have the opportunity to hear from our brother again. When we hear tonight, let us make that decision. Brothers, we want an army in Chicago and all throughout America and all over the world. Ask yourself, are you one of the soldiers of Allah? Are you ready to stand up and defend your nation and to build for yourself? And sisters, you have to ask yourself the same question. Are you ready now? Are you ready to accept that God is with us, his power, his authority, as we welcome our minister, the leader of the nation of Islam, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan? Let us receive him. All praise is due to Allah. Thank you. That's how I feel like I know everybody. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. We are very thankful to Allah to have this privilege of speaking uh, to you again on the subject of domestic violence, its causes, and uh, solutions. disappointment and frustration cover the homes of black people. Yes, sir. Disappointment and frustration. The level of frustration that black men function or attempt to function under is so great that black men live under extraordinary stress, causing even young people to suffer with stroke, high blood pressure, hypertension. And young men find themselves, who are, uh, are corporate executives, literally impotent unable to carry out the normal function of a husband to a wife. Extraordinary stress produced by frustration of natural desires and disappointment. Many brothers and sisters marry each other with a high level of expectancy. And in a short while, we become disappointed in each other. Sometimes we don't even know why. We search our minds and we search our hearts. Why am I feeling this way about my mate? All of a sudden, there's this disappointment. 
there is a very high level of frustration and disappointment in black women. The women don't appreciate, thank you, the level of disappointment and frustration in the black man. And the black man does not appreciate the level of disappointment and frustration in the black woman. So here we are naturally suited to each other, having become by circumstance natural opponents of each other, vying with each other rather than working with each other for the common good of all. If in the Robert Taylor Holmes, 93% of the homes are headed by a woman with no male presence, that should tell you that there's a high level of frustration disappointment in our homes. When a woman is frustrated to that point, how does she give vent to her frustration and her disappointment? And how does the man, the male, give vent to this high level of frustration and disappointment? We start generally with very caustic words. Some men say, I don't beat my wife. And that is something that you can be proud of, brothers. If you don't hit your wife, you are generally a very good person. But sometimes we can do as much violence with a word that a person would rather be hit than to suffer the kind of verbal abuse that we give to one another in the name of straightening things out. Now, a woman is different from the man. The Quran lays specific stress in these words, and the female is not like the male. Well, we know that, but why does the Quran make a specific reference to this difference in the female and the male? Tonight, I pray that Allah will bless me to get this subject matter over in a short period of time, but I, I want you to reason with me tonight as we go probably a little deeper than we did on Sunday. The Quran says that the male is a degree above the female. Allah says in the Quran, because the male is a degree above the female, God gives the male the authority in the home. Those of you who read the Bible, if you study the writings of Paul, Paul says that Christ is the head of man. Man, the head of woman. How did this happen? How do we as men accept this degree above? And what does that imply? How does a woman accept that today? 
that the male is a degree above the female and if this is true how did it become so again in the Quran it is written men are the maintainers of women and the word maintainer means in Arabic the word is Kamal Rajulu Alal Marati means he maintained her and managed her affair having charge of her affair. Let's stop right there. God, y'all all right? Yes, sir. I don't want you to throw your shoes at me. <laughs> the male is given the authority by God not only to be her husband but the manager of her and her affairs now let's stop right there if you've got a business all businesses need what management management exercises control Management observes, studies the personnel and the property, and management draws or gets the best out of each person under his or her management and manages goods so that it brings profit. Every fighter that is a great fighter has a manager. Every singer that is a great singer or song stylist or whatnot has a manager. The manager determines and lays out the program for the development of the talent that he or she manages. Gets the right persons to help train the fighter gets the proper fights for the fighter the fighter defers you hear the fighter in the ring say well uh, would you like to fight uh, so and so next well you have to speak to my manager well what woman today can say that her husband is the manager of her affairs and exercises control in the affairs of his wife. Very, 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 very few. And most women today if the man even attempts management, she, like a stallion, resists a bit in her mouth, resists the saddle, and any reins in his hand. And as a result, usually in six months, she throws the rider. Oh, there's a divorce. That's what I'm saying. And he admits in his heart of hearts, I just couldn't handle her. I just couldn't handle this woman. She's disappointed because you couldn't handle it. Because in reality, she wanted you to handle affairs. And she's frustrated that you didn't have what she thought you had. So she's disappointed and frustrated. 
man now for somebody to be disappointed and frustrated because he couldn't manage and in reality you fought his management which is what you would do until he showed he could handle it you know how a horse will buck and buck and buck and buck and then when they know you know what you're doing they say oh. you know, and, then, right. and they get on down and say okay yeah. <laughs> You know, the female is like that, brother. She'll buck. She's supposed to. To see if you are qualified to ride. This is true. That's why she's called a bride. And you are called a groom. Because those are terms that you use for horses. But they are applicable in marital affairs. So because the groom don't know how to groom. And the bride refuses to go down the bridal path. She don't want no blinders on her eyes. No, no, no. I got to see every man that looks good. I won't see him. Don't you put no blinders on my eyes. Well, how you going to walk down the path? You got to put blinders on her eyes, brother. What do you mean by that, Farrakhan? I certainly don't mean, you know, putting something on your eyes. But when that man learns how to be what God created him to be when you relate to a woman the stronger your relationship the stronger your ability to manage affairs the blinders keep growing and pretty soon she sees nobody but you yeah did the man get a degree above the woman? How did that happen? Why did God do that in the first place? The woman is so great a creature. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad used to enter into our silly arguments sometimes because the brothers always had some talk about the sisters and the sisters always had some talk about the brothers and they would use the messenger as a referee sometime and uh, some of the bean soup scientists <laughs> thought that the woman came with the splitting of the moon 66 trillion years ago and uh, I was at the table one night when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said there never was a time when there was not a woman. That's a very heavy statement. Now I'm going to go to the Quran and get after the creation of a woman and how she is created a degree beneath and what the nature of the woman is and then come to the nature of the man and why we're both frustrated with one another Allah says in the Quran that he created us from a single essence and created its mate of the same kind from that same single essence. That's very, very powerful to understand. First, you should know that the Quran in using the word mate, 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 not enemy, not devil, not opposer, but mate 
some brothers like to throw out the thought that the woman is the first devil. I've heard this kind of cheap talk. Brother, don't you ever move your mouth to speak such ignorance. Yes, sir. You're talking about your mother. If your mother is a devil, what could you be? Right. When she's your first teacher. Right. No, brothers. This is cheap talk by men who cannot handle women. And because they don't know the art and the science of handling a woman and are frustrated in trying before they go into homosexuality, they have to beat the woman down and call her all kinds of cheap names to justify homosexuality. <laughs> and brother, when you beat down a woman, that's where you're headed because that's your mate. And if you don't see her as a mate, you see her as a devil, and the next thing you gotta do is get away from the devil, then where are you going? If this is your mate, where are you going after her? You going to one another? Is a man your mate? He's your brother, not your lover. <laughs> The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, and the Quran bears him witness, that Allah is not begotten, nor does he beget. If Allah is not begotten, then God has no mother. God is self-created. Yet, in God's self-creation, he came out of triple darkness. As I mentioned in our Savior's Day speech, that that darkness was a womb. And when he made himself up out of that darkness, there was in him that which was of that darkness. If it were considered a womb, then in him was that. And right now, in every man is a woman. And in every woman, there's a part of the man. We are from the same essence. Listen good. There's a time when the male and the female breast looks the same. When the man evolves and the woman evolves into her nature, that changes. But at one point, they looked exactly alike. In the male is the female, and in the female is part of the male. The organs are similar at certain points. Yes, sir. Why then should we be so hateful of one another when God created us perfectly to mate with each other? You know, you got on a beautiful pair of shoes, brother, but if I took one of them, you want to look for the mate. That's right. <laughs> you know? 
he got on brown. I can't give him that brother's red sneaker and say that's the mate. First of all, it's the wrong color, the wrong size. Poor brother be going out of here and everybody would be laughing at him because he don't have a mate on. If we are created by God to be the mate of each other, we are born to fit to compliment each other. But there are differences that has to be appreciated. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, after Allah created himself, he studied himself. And in himself, he found a second self. Imagine God struggling through darkness to create self, a lot of pain involved, a lot of pain involved. And he makes every life to bear witness to his own beginning because no child comes into this world except through pain. Not only does the mother have pain, but the baby in making itself up by the guidance of God, by the law that he set forth from his own self-creation. We are bearing witness every time that one, a female gets pregnant, she is bearing witness to the self-creation because it happens in the darkness and she's unaware of it. An explosion takes place in the triple darkness of the womb, recreating the beginning so you don't have to wonder how it began. Look and study how you began in you. In you is the secret of the beginning. But you're looking everywhere to discover where it began instead of looking right at yourself. You are a witness bearer of God. Listen now. If he creates himself, and the Quran and Bible and all scripture refer to God as he, him, king, ruler, they give him a masculine gender. There's nothing wrong with that. The male predominates. From himself, he saw a second self. That's important to understand. Not a foreigner. No, 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 no. I want you to hear me well. You that think your woman is something opposed to you and enemy to you. God saw in himself comfort for himself. And from that single essence, he extracted the female from himself. So she is directly from God himself. In fact, she is his first creation and she's the first Muslim. No, 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 I don't want you to clap. I don't want you to clap. I want you to think. He comes into existence. There's a law by which he comes into existence. He brings his first creature into existence from his own essence. And that's you female. He couldn't make you equal to him because there is no equal to God. But he made you a little less than himself so that you could look to him. And he made you with a nature to submit to him who created you. Therefore, your nature is to bow down to him from whom you had your beginning, and that's God himself.
and he made you with a nature to submit to him who created you. Therefore, your nature is to bow down to him from whom you had your beginning. And that's God himself. Now, look at your nature. Boy, boy, boy. You wouldn't tell God, you ain't no manager over me. That's right. You don't determine my affair. Who do you think you are? He's your creator. That's right. And because he's your creator, you honor him. You love him. You submit to him. And you are his consolation. So from these two came many men and women. No. What do you mean, Farrakhan? Look, brother and sister, you start from one cell. Then you multiply their billions of cells, but the cell is similar. You are many human beings, but the essence of you comes right back to God. Yeah. That's why we should never disrespect somebody because they are not, quote unquote, of our family. These all spring from the same essence, God himself. Do you hear me? So if you marry a woman and she has children from some other man, don't dog those children because they didn't come from you. Because if you trace your beginning and that, that child's beginning, it goes yeah. back to that single essence, yes, sir. which is God himself. So wherever you see that human child that is a member of the original people, that is your flesh and your blood. There is no black man or woman on this earth that is not your family. That goes all the way back to God himself. Now you, sister, he made you a degree beneath himself. But you are divine in your nature. I didn't bring a handkerchief with me. Somebody have one. You are divine in your nature. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, your nature is to equal yourself up to God. You strive. He sets the standard, you strive for it. Whatever a man does when a woman falls in love with the man, the woman will try to equal herself up to that standard. This is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, there's no such thing as a no good woman. Every woman that you see that is no good was made that way by a no good man. Now, now look at this. If you're not right, sister, look at your life. Look at your condition. You submitted yourself to the management of somebody that mismanaged you and your affairs. And you know, when you first fall in love, pardon me? Yes, sir. When you first fall in love, if that man does not honor and respect the power of your love, which allows you to submit to his control, if that man is no good, he'll make you a no good woman. Isn't that something? Then after you are made no good, then what happens to what you produce? Now, what does that have to do 
with management of affairs and the level of frustration in the black man. The black man, direct descendant of God, is given the nature of God himself. That nature is called Islam. You don't ever have to join Islam. You are born by nature to submit your will to do the will of God. So the nature in the black man is the nature of management. Thank you. The nature of control. The nature of power. Yes. The nature of being a grantor of security the nature of being a protector, the nature of being a destroyer. All of that is written genetically in you as a man. And as a man who has been enslaved by another man, he has interfered with your knowledge to allow you to express your nature. So from the time you were enslaved, you are a frustrated black man. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When he robbed you of the knowledge of yourself, then you could not ever be a groom for a bride. She was a bride, but you never have been a groom. In, in that she walked down a path, but she was dragging you. You weren't guiding or controlling nothing. And she laughs because she controls the man. She controls him through sex. She controls him and manipulates him by the clever, wise use of his nature. She knows you better than you know yourself. Because the woman comes under you to study you. Every nuance about you, she's already picking up on it. And she knows what buttons to push. Am I lying, sister? <laughs> Do you study the man that you love or the man you intend to marry? You study him? Yeah. For what purpose? <laughs> Go ahead, brother. I just am asking a question. <laughs> Excuse me. You study him for the purpose of knowing how both to help him and to hurt him. She can do both. All depends on how we perform our duty. And by the Caucasian robbing us of the knowledge of self and the knowledge of how to be a man, a maintainer of women, a manager of the woman and her affairs. You have to have knowledge to do that. And that's why they call man, manhood, manhood. We grow into manhood. The hood is that which covers the head. The hood represents knowledge, not a head covering. You put a fez on as a man, that fez represents what is supposed to be under the fez. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The fez represents knowledge, brothers. When you have the knowledge of God, then you have the knowledge of how to grow to be more like him in the way he governs the affairs of things. Yes, then the more godlike we are, the more our women submit to control, to management. God is wise. Yes. Women don't buck wise people. A woman wants to know that her husband is not only strong, when she's first attracted to him, he, you know, he can't be, you know, I mean, he, he, he can't be a brother, you know what I mean? That, uh, 
<laughs> I'm out there now. Huh? It's got to be a physical attraction. That's what I'm saying. That comes first. You appeal to her. You look nice, brothers. You really look nice. Tall, dark, you know what I mean? Handsome. Yes, sir. You're buffed. You <laughs> put your body in good shape. She said, wow, man, this is bad. <laughs> Woman want to know the strength is walking beside That's her. That's right. Yes, sir. Because she needs to be made secure. That's the nature of the creature. The creature has to be made secure by the creator. So the woman must be made secure by God. So in her nature, she must be made safe by the man. That's why women jump on your case when the money's not there for the rent. When the money's not there for the food, you tell her, baby, it's coming. She can't buy that. Her mind won't let her rest at night when she knows the rent is due and there ain't no money there to pay it. So she'll wake you up in the night. Honey, honey, listen, listen now, listen. And you say, woman, I got to sleep. And she'll be all on our case about where's the money for the rent. You see, you shouldn't have blown that money. She didn't mind you buying her that dress. She took the dress, but at the end of the month, she's hot because the money ain't there for the rent. That's just her nature, brother. She's not going to stop doing that. There ain't no use in getting upset with her. She's always talking about money. But 90% of the problems in our home is over money. Because in this world's life, money is the medium of exchange. Money is the satisfaction of her desires. Money is that which allows her to rest comfortable at night because your money, your ability to make money is that which allows her to pay the rent or allows the rent to be paid. She knows she is being made secure. Yes. Yes, and that's what a Muslim is. A Muslim is one who is made secure and as a result of that safety and that security has entered into peace. It is the duty of a man to bring peace to his wife. I wish you all would just stop talking in the back, wherever you are, in this auditorium, I don't want nothing going on. Everything is going on right here. You need to know what I'm saying. You make sure that they're not out in the hall lollygagging. Get in here and stand around the wall. Yes, sir. That's why half of you in hell because you want to officiate, but you don't want to hear nothing. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just clean all of that out in there. Just put the guys on the door and bring everybody and let them stand around the wall. Because I don't want to hear nothing after the night that you're arguing in the house. Right. That's right. Excuse me. If you don't think that you need this, then you can excuse yourself. That means you, you know and your, ha your home is happy. You can get out of here. I'll see you next time. But if you're a black man and a black woman, I know you in hell. You ain't got to tell me where you are. I know where you are. And only those of you are at peace right now because you ain't found out yet. Right. You in some silly courtship stage. Oh, he's so cute. You ain't checked his, his wallet out. <laughs> but you're going to check his wallet after marriage. That's right. No, check it before. Go ahead.
He's cute. Take that to the bank. <laughs> Pay your rent with his muscles and his process. Oh. Pay your rent because he's the best basketball player in the high school. Pay your rent with that. You lay down and have babies and then don't know what the hell to do after that because you're not looking at things as you should look at it. Right. 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 And while I'm on that subject, I want to say something about the nature of things. Parents, we are working hard. Most parents are working so hard we are not watching as we should. You can't watch every minute of every hour of every day. But when our children get to a certain age, parents, they are being upset by the bombardment That's right. of a crazed world yeah. that is sex mad, yes, run by scientists of evil yes, freaks. That's right. You don't know what you're doing when you sit your children down hour after hour in front of a television right. and you go off with your foolishness partying, leaving your babies to be manipulated by the madness of that television. Yes, sir. Children 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old, girls developed. You know this. Their bodies are the bodies of women, though their heads are the heads of children. You say, well, she's only 12. Oh, that's my boy. He's only 12. What does that mean? 12 today is like 34 yesterday. Yes, sir. Right. Right. What I'm suggesting, parents, look, look, look. These are our children. We can't throw them away if they make mistakes. But children, in the development of their nature, need management over their affairs. They are not qualified, neither are older ones of us qualified to manage nature. Have you ever seen a storm? Try to manage a tornado. They can't manage that. That's right. You may be able to predict, but you can't manage. That's right. That's exactly it. Nature, this that God put in us, man, this is a powerful thing. Yes. We got a law in Islam, we don't commit fornication. We don't commit adultery. Stop right there. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm off my subject now, but really I'm on my subject. Yes, you are. law almost becomes a joke because there's another law working fornication ruins the future of young people you learn about your sexuality and naturally you want to experiment that's natural and that's why in Islam, we don't have the two free intermingling of the sexes because when you keep putting them together like that, as they grow, they're going to start experimentation. You can't blame them for that. They want to find out what this urge is that I have. Parents don't want to talk about sex. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's right. Yeah, talk about that. You don't need no book to teach you about sex. That's right. That's right. Nature teaches you. Yes, sir. Dogs don't have a book that they study. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have no snake book, no bird book, no bee book, but all kind. Every time you look around, there's another bird, another That's right. bee. That's right. <laughs> and you ain't got to teach people about sex. Nature got it 
all down pat. Certain things you learn. <laughs> but parents got to talk to your children. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Well, well, we can't talk about that. Why not? That's how they got here. That's right. That's right. Why you can't talk about it? We got to face reality here. Sex is real. Right. It ain't something that the devil did. It's what God has decreed. Yes, yes sir. When boys and girls get to a certain age, they're naturally attracted to one another. That you'll never stop. You can keep them shut up in a room all day long, blacking out the windows. Never let them see a TV. But they'll know that nature is driving them toward the opposite. And when they pierce them walls, you got a s trouble on your hands. You know, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us in the history of Mary and Joseph. They were childhood sweethearts. They loved each other from childhood, and that happens. But the father didn't want Joseph when he was old enough to marry Mary. So he went on and got married. But the woman that he married and had children for, he loved her. But that woman that he was denied was like the mate of his soul. You can understand that, can't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somehow they met. I'll go into the details at another time. And the law at that time was any male or female committing fornication or adultery, the law is you're stoned to death. Why? We protect the home. Because if you don't protect the home, you're not protecting civilization. That's right. That's right. So the law that God sent down through Moses, a very stern, a very strict law. If you come in my home after my wife or I come in your home after your wife, I got to pay with my life for that. But when you leave two people alone in a room and they love each other, why tell them about the law of fornication? That just happened. Because two people in love with each other, a higher law kicks in. Nature's law. They love each other. They're attracted to each other. Yes, you said, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not. Very nice of you. But when you say thou shalt not, then you should be in the room. <laughs> <laughs> then you know thou wilt not. Keep the lights on. And if you see the lights go down, move on in. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But when you so busy with your mates, your frustrations, till you allow your daughters and your sons the freedom to do and the time to play, and your attention is gone in another direction than two young people that are experimenting with nature. They don't even have to love each other. They just have to be curious. And since by nature we are born curious, then you leave them to experiment and the result is pregnancy or unwanted pregnancy, then abortion or a baby is born, but there's no compatibility there with the person who, who is the father of that child and the young child has to suffer now through that. But good can come out of that. You don't have to worry about it. Good. God makes good come out of whatever you think is wrong. God will bring good out of it if you have the right attitude toward it. You should never destroy your children because they made a mistake. Embrace them. But they have to learn now.
the hard way. What am I saying? The law of nature is bigger than a commandment. And if you want the law to be respected, then good manners will protect good morals. You do not leave a boy and a girl alone together in any room for any amount of time. When I first became a Muslim, my teacher was Malcolm X, and he said, an egg, an egg is hard boiled at three minutes. <laughs> so I took that to mean something. <laughs> Better keep these males and these females away from each other in any of those uncontrolled circumstances if you want them to come out of this thing right. And if your child makes a mistake, let me just say this, it ain't because they're bad. That's right. That's right. Your children are not bad. The world is yes, bad. And we are not watching as we should. That's why every Muslim is given the general order Take charge of this post in all temple property in view. Then walk your post in a perfect manner, keeping always on the alert. Why? Why? Because if you're not alert, something will come up. Now let me get back and finish my subject, which that was part of. Now, brothers, When you don't have the knowledge to manage, you're going to be frustrated in your marital life. You find a woman that you love, she attracts you, you get married, and a year later the attraction is gone. And you wonder why you're having so much hell with that woman that you loved so much a few months ago. Where did all this hell come from? The hell came because she's disappointed and she's frustrated. She's disappointed with us because we're not securing her. And you know what, sisters? Satan got your head so messed up that a man can't hardly satisfy you because Satan keeps raising your level of desire. You don't want a man, I mean a poor man, this is a poor man. This is a poor black man in a white man's world that is designed to crush him. I know when you look at the lifestyle of the rich and the famous, When you look at Dallas, when you look at them soaps, you want those nice things, you want nice clothes, you want fine shoes, you want some diamonds on your hand, but damn it, you married a poor black man. How in the hell is he gonna give you that? And if he does not have the money, and the wherewithal, because in order to get it in this life, you got to have something up top here. He left school. <coughs> so he's working on a job, but you know what they give him? $4.50, $5, $6, this is a man. He can't make it off that kind of money. He can't satisfy you off that kind of money, but you, sisters, you don't know how to control your desire and bring your desire within the level of his pocketbook, or you don't know how to sit down together and plan, he's working, you working, how to work it out so you can both fulfill your desires 
amicably, reasonably. But you get frustrated with each other, then the words that come out of your mouth. Check the words now. He comes in. Naturally, when he comes in, you frustrated. The house looks frustrated. <laughs> the dishes are in the sink from three days ago. The baby diapers is... <laughs> the flies have found the diapers. <laughs> the bedroom looks like a tornado hit it. Dishes piled up in the sink. The bathroom, when you go in it, you want to get out of it quick. <laughs> the man comes in, he don't want to stay there. He said, baby, is there something to eat? I don't know. <laughs> Did you bring anything? <laughs> She ain't got no desire to cook now. She frustrated. So you tell her, look at this house. Look at this house. And she said, yeah, nigga, look at it. <laughs> she ain't big as a minute. And her husband know he could crush her. Now, here they go with words now. I'm just sick of this. You make me sick. Now, she's cutting him. Rip, rip, rip. Now, he's already cut. The world beat him. God made him to be a manager. And either he got the knowledge and don't have the, the money or he lacks both the knowledge and the money, so he's doubly frustrated to the 19th power. <laughs> now he comes home and you at him, cause the house is a wreck, so he's cutting you, you cutting him, then the level of verbal violence goes up. And then the, the rest is history. So-and-so killed, Man throws wife out six floor window. <laughs> Babies right behind them. <laughs> wife stabs husband in kitchen. He was trying to get her to the bedroom to shoot her. <laughs> real. Very real. Now, brothers and sisters, this is a problem. Yes, sir. This man is frustrated. He don't even know why he's frustrated. Because by nature, he's a producer. Every brother in here by nature is a producer. Every brother in here by nature is a manager. Every brother in here by nature is a controller of affairs. And every brother in here by nature is one who wants to grant security to the woman in his life and the children that come from his life. Now, he's got that in him by nature. As long as his nature is dead and he don't know what it is, he's just functioning on autopilot. But when truth comes, truth awakens the nature of the black man. This black man today is more awake. That's true. Yes, sir. But he's still awake now, but without the means to do what an awake man should do. So there's double frustration. So he's a powder keg right now of potential violence. There ain't one in this room that is not a killer, potentially. All of us just crazy as hell. <laughs> I'm just sorry, I just gotta talk like this, brothers. Talk to us, brother. We are so screwed up in yeah. terms of lack of fulfillment yes, sir. that we are walking dynamite ready to blow that's why when the white man put a gun in your hand and call you a gang leader gang banger you just got to shoot somebody get off your frustration you drive by you ain't conscious man crazy killing babies killing your mother 
you so messed up that the crack dealer can come and just give you crack now because the level of your frustration is so deep till you trying to cover your pain with drugs but the drug never helps you what you need is knowledge and the freedom to exercise that knowledge but who who is gonna who's gonna give you that Bush don't have no plan for you Mayor Daly don't have no plan for you the governor don't have any plan for you the only man that I know that had a plan for black people that is a comprehensive plan is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad but you are walking by that man Now look, brothers, I'm appealing to you right now. Brothers, 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 look. We can't make it by ourselves. All these beautiful young men, they need money in their pocket. Even if you're single, you can't function without money. Them, them, uh, 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 what do you call them things you got on? Nikes or Air Jordans or whatever it is, it costs money, man. And you know that's the style, that's the way you want to profile. And if you ain't got no money, what you going to do to get it? Some poor brother got him some Nikes, Air Jordans. Some poor brother got him one of these designer jackets. He walking down the street, you said, damn, look at that nigga got. Just what I needed. You kill him, take his shoes, take his jacket. You take human life over some damn rubber shoes that Jordan says will make you jump higher. You know you crazy as hell. You gone here, man. Totally frustrated. Kill a human being over a vial of crack. That nigga took my damn crack and didn't pay me, I'll show him. This is how crazy we have become, brothers. What's the solution? Look, brothers, just the men on this side of this auditorium, if you allow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to fill your head with the right knowledge, that knowledge will re begin to relieve some of that pressure. But the thing that will really relieve it is when we as a body pool our resources and begin to develop an economic base that will allow us to fulfill our own desires to comfort, to secure, to protect our wives and our children. You are born managers. Look at a pimp. Pimp is a manager. He's a controller of affairs. <laughs> not a good one, you understand? That's not for good, but I'm saying look at the talent. Look at how he's using it. That same pimp, if you turn his knowledge in a righteous direction, he can manage a supermarket. And put people to work and see that they do their job. Like he see that that woman does her job and go upside her head. I'm not saying that that's going to work today. But the, but the point is, he's trying to ex exercise some control. That's his nature. And that's why, brothers, we are very, very frustrated and prone to violence. And that's why there's a heavy increase of violence in the black community because we are the most frustrated in terms of the nature of control that God put in us as men. Now, sisters, how are you going to deal with this highly explosive human being? You have to realize, sisters, that you have a major role to play in cooling him out and preparing him for his advancement, which is your advancement. You ain't going nowhere without the black man. 
He's not going anywhere without you. We can't. We are each other's mate. How do you handle a man that's in this condition? How, how do you deal with him? You know, in the MGT class, question number 14 of lesson number one, what is the meaning of MGT and GCC? Muslim Girls Training and General Civilization class. And in this class, there are six basic training units. One. What is one? How to what? How to keep house. Why you say it so soft? Come on. What is the, what is the first basic unit? How to keep house. Why must you know how to keep house? Now the brothers will say, yeah. <laughs> but how to keep house is a part of our training too. On another level, I'll show you that in, in, in a minute. Look, sisters, wherever you live, if it's an apartment, if it's a room, that's your environment. You can't let that environment degenerate to filth because you live there so your nature and your duty by nature is to keep that house what do you mean keep house put things where they belong keep things in order and above all keep things clean now how does that relate to question number one of lesson number one? Why isn't the devil settled on the best part of the planet Earth? Because the Earth belongs to the original black man and knowing that the devil was wicked, he put him out into the worst part and kept the best part for himself. That's housekeeping on another level. We got to clean the Earth up from the enemy and his evil and we got to bring order back to a world of disorder but it's keeping house on another level but sisters where you live what does it look like how did you leave it when you came tonight how will you find it when you get home and just think of a husband and a wife going into that after they leave the mosque they go home and step in Chaos. Well, what does that do to your head? Come on. And what does it do to his head? Now, he's already explosive. He's crazy now. <laughs> Best thing to do when you have somebody that's highly explosive, bring him into an ordered environment. He get in, he sees order, maybe he'll come to order. <laughs> oh, that's how you say tense. But you don't say to your man when they come in, Tench, huh? come on, soldier. <laughs> but you present him with order, and the man will respond to order because by nature, he's a soldier. Don't you come to the door to greet him in chaos. Old dirty shirt on. Sleep in your eyes from last night. Hair not combed. You miss the bathroom. No deodorant. And here he come. I'm home, baby. <laughs> and here you come. That's why the prostitutes take money from you because they know what to do for your man and you forgot <laughs> that's, that's rough stuff but whores are making money today even faggots <laughs> excuse me anybody in that condition I'm not I'm not I'm not 
Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to clean up this language here. I got to clean this language up because I don't want to be offensive. You know, brothers, when we call ourselves straight and somebody else is gay, we like to throw off on them. But you know, one sickness is as bad as another. So I want anybody in here that's a homosexual to understand that we, we're not here to beat our people down. We're here to lift our people up. And whatever, wherever we're out of order, to bring us back into divine order that we may be acceptable to ourselves and acceptable to God. So I just want to clear that up. But anyway, there are men out there dressed like women. and your husband will spend money with them. Now that's cold. He's a big old man. Dressed like a woman. Out there catching your husband as he get off work. Hey honey. You want a little pleasure before you go home to the madness? <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be surprised how many stop. <laughs> Sisters, how to keep house. What's the next training unit? How to rear your children. Now your children become a big problem. You know, you have two, three, and they drive you up a wall because you don't really know how to rear them. You don't know how to manage what's under you. It's management now. You got three. <sighs> I got four. I got five. Yeah, I know. Watch that chicken that produced nine or ten. You see them. Uh, I, I was driving the other day. I saw a little, looked like a duck, and about six ducks was running behind this little duck, and the duck was making sure that them little children got out of the highway. She seen that big Range Rover coming. That female duck was concerned about them little ones, and she managed to get them off that road. Management. The little creatures know how to manage. Our babies got us going up the wall, down the wall. Oh, I'm going crazy, I'm going crazy. Going crazy for what? Because you don't know how to manage that. But if you managed it properly, I'm telling you, learn how to rear your children. Of course, I'm not saying you won't get frustrated now. But the more you learn management of those resources, honest to God, sister, you can make a beautiful home. And when your husband comes home, the children look nice. And when they, he come in, they run, Daddy! Oh, that make a man fly! but you home grumbling all day about that man and you expect the children to call him daddy when he get in. Sister, let me tell you something. You know, you are the one that can make your children love your husband and you can make them hate your husband. If you got a hard working man and there are some men that I know that really work Huh. They're not home all the time, but you can put your hand on them. You know exactly where they are. They're not <clears throat> playing with some other woman. They're just hard working. When you got a hard working husband like that, how do you represent him in his absence to his children? When daddy's not there throwing a ball with him, what do you say? Your father. I don't know where he is. He just makes me sick. He's never here. When we need him. But every week the money's there for you to do what you need to do. That's not the way you handle your husband when he's not there. And I watch this with mothers, so many Muslim mothers. You really hate the fact that Islam has come into your life and your husbands spend time trying to build a nation. And many sisters, they don't, they don't say nothing outwardly to him, but it's an inner rage. They literally hate Islam. Look at this. I got to put on this headpiece. 
long dress. And then followed that man into this religion. Then when you say, Assalamu alaikum, you don't mean it. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> bringing you to the mosque is like bringing you to jail. Must I go there again this week? <laughs> See, if you don't love something, you start becoming a hypocrite real early. And this can be on the male side as well as the female side, but I'm just dealing now with male frustration. When that man dedicates himself, I'm telling you what I know. Your duty to them children is to make those children understand where that man is and why he's making that kind of sacrifice. Then the children will grow to love their father even when he's not there because he's present in you. Listen to me good. No, 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 no. I don't want no applause. I want you to think. See, look at me. I'm like the wife of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm a male. But yet I'm in the feminine gender in relationship to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because he is my teacher, my leader, my guide, and he has fed me knowledge. He is absent. He's not physically present. And I'm producing babies for him. And I love it when they say how they love the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and have never seen his face. But they know he's the man. Now listen, they know it because I represent him in his absence. I'm gone all the time. But I'm not out there playing. I'm out there teaching our people. How do you represent me in my absence? What kind of mother are you? To me, I come home and I see the children with an ugly frown on their face. When they see me, I know you're not telling them right. See, if you hate Islam, get the hell out of it. If you don't want it, leave it. Tell your husband, I don't want this and the hell with you. I'm gone. Be a woman. Be a truthful woman. But don't be no damn snake and a hypocrite and then poison your children because your husband want to build a future for you. I'm just telling you straight, sisters. Some of you are hypocrites. Just hypocrites, but you don't have the courage to tell your husband. No peace in the house. You don't know how to rear your children. Well, I can't rear them alone. Why not? What God put in your nature, he didn't put it in the nature of a man. A man looks strange around a house all day long with babies in his hand. That is not what we're made for. A man is made and created with a body and a nature to go out and conquer the world for that woman. Not sit up at home changing diapers. Well, my husband gonna help me because he helped me to get them. And that's why he ain't making no money. But you got him home looking at him. And the more you look at him with the baby in his hand, the more disgusted you get. Roll reversal. That's why his hair getting long. We got earrings in his ears. Next thing you know, he'll be wearing lace drawers. <laughs> Damn it, you gonna be a man? Or what the hell are you gonna be? The woman need a man, not something that look like her. I know you don't like this, but hell, I can't talk to you on what you like, man. 
I'm your brother. You don't need to be walking around here with no damn braids in your head. If you're going to be a man, let's be a man. And go out and conquer a world for this woman and these babies that she gives us. We can do it. How to rear our children. What's next? How to what? How to do what? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I, you say it a little louder. Somebody said cook. I other one said how to take care of your husband. Which one is it? Is how to take care of your husband? Is that what it is, Sister Muhammad? No. You did? To rear your children and do what for your husband? Take care of him. Oh, that's good. Take care of him. Did you know that that man needs care? Well, what about me? I need some too. <laughs> of course you do. Of course you do. But listen, sisters, I'm not trying to throw this weight on you. But right now, you're stronger. He's supposed to be a degree above you, but right now, you're several degrees above him. He's got to be raised back to his rightful position so you can honor him, love him, respect him. And you got to help do that. And the only way you can help to do that, you got to know what a man is and what a man needs and how to take care of a man. That's what a prostitute knows. She ain't got to live with him every day. So she, hers is a false care. Yours is real. You know that caring for a man is not just cooking. Though you got to learn how to preserve his health and strength so he can go out and bust them bricks for you. Keep him healthy. Don't give him no chicken McNuggets <laughs> and french fries. Come on, baby, it's time to eat. <laughs> what we having tonight, baby? I done set the pizza hut, honey. <laughs> Poor man is out there with that machine digging in concrete off a pizza hut.
poor man is out there with that machine digging the concrete off our pizza hut. <laughs> Sisters, you got to know how to take care of him. But the real care that you got to learn how to deal with him with is his head. Because his head is messed up. And you, sisters, because you study him so, when you see him, you can tell. Mm -mm. That boy needs some care. <laughs> Somebody been messing with him today. And you got to be really wise to say the right word. And I'm telling you, sister, the right word from the right spirit can change his mind around and make him the man that you want him to be. Please, sisters, for your sake and for our sake, be patient with this black man. He's a good man, but he needs training. Ain't no white man going to train him. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was given that mission by God to raise the black man up. And it is difficult, brothers. It's not easy to work with us. But it must be done. And while that's happening, you got to help your man. Because you're producing girls today that are going to marry boys tomorrow. And if we don't make a change today, where's the future? of our young girls. You don't have any. So we got to make a change and understand that this man is messed up, this man is sick and, and hurt and frustrated and disappointment and it ain't really got nothing to do with you. It's his nature that's messed up. He got the right nature but the wrong man is in charge. And I'm talking about white folks. White folks are in charge of our lives, brothers. And they don't think two cents of us. They're not creating no jobs for us. They don't care whether you're properly educated or not. That is a responsibility we got to take for ourselves, brother. White people are not going to prepare no future for you so you can prepare a future for your wife. This is why he'll take your woman and give her a job. But he won't do nothing for the black man. So the woman is all dressed up downtown in his office. You can't even find a job. And if you don't know how to create a job, you're out there frustrated, brothers. Mentally messed up. You know you, nature makes you need a woman. But when you get a woman, you can't do nothing for her. Therefore, she don't want to do nothing for you. She may want to in the beginning, but that, that desire dies quick. Am I lying, sisters? Brother, when you got a woman that really, really loves you, ooh, brother, will she cook? Come on. Man, she'll lay a meal on you that'll make McDonald's go out of business. When a woman loves a man, she don't call it slavery to serve him. Because his nature is to serve you. That's why he's working. Should be. To serve you. You think it's a one-way street? Uh-uh. When he comes in, if he's tired, say, baby, you look tired. Run the water for him. Uh, me? Run the water for him? <laughs> You want to build him and make him go and challenge a world for you. Run some water. That ain't much. Just run it. Make sure it's nice. Put a little bubble bath in there for the poor boy. Boy, jump in that bubble bath. You say, how you feel, baby? Care for him. Care for him. I mean, the man is a giant. But if you don't care for him, see that grooming stuff? If you take care of this man, he'll knock the world out for you. For you, he'll do it. Because believe me, he don't have to die to go to heaven. The only heaven that we have is men. 
is found in every one of these women. That's where our heaven is, brothers. It's in them. But like gold that's in the earth, to know it's there is one thing. To know how to mine it out and put it into service for you is another. You know that this woman got something, but you don't know how to get it out. And that's why you need to come and let the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teach you how to do that, brother. But sisters, if you do your part, get in your class and learn how to care for this man. And I'll tell you frankly, my wife is not here tonight, so I can talk better about her when she ain't here. <laughs> Don't you tell her what I said. <laughs> but let me tell you something. The only reason I'm the kind of man that I am is because God gave me that kind of a woman. You know, when a man is trying to be a man, at first he really don't know how. And he starts ordering you around. Yes, he does. He's trying to show you, know, he's boss. He ain't been boss or nothing. <laughs> and when he learned he's the boss, I mean, all right, hey, where's my food? <laughs> Don't stand off and say, look, nigga, don't you talk to me that way. Who the hell did, look. See, now you ready for a fight. <laughs> More than likely, physically, you can't win, so you got to reach for the knife and force him to go in the room and get the gun. <laughs> so when he acts foolish like that, you get him what he asked for and say, now, sweetheart, was it necessary for you to talk to me like that? I'm real hurt. And he said, say, oh, baby. And he said, say, oh, sugar, excuse me. You know, I mean, I, I had a hard day, baby, you know what I mean? But he's a soldier, and he don't know that you not like that. He don't have to come home and order you. You ain't his, uh, his uh, private soldier. But look at how you can handle him so beautifully if you learn, know how to take care of him, see? He really needs a lot of care. He's delicate even though he's a, a magnificent machine. But he's delicate. He is really, 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 really delicate. He's all this macho, he's all this power, but the wrong word can shatter him. Did you know that, sisters? Of course you do. Because you shatter him. And after he's all shattered, and broken, you can't respect him anymore. So why cut him down with your mouth? Even when you know he deserves it, and even when you know you can do it, you have to restrain yourself from that. And I'm going to tell you something about Sister Farrakhan. She didn't do it because I was such a great man. She did it because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad got her in this class and trained her. And when I cut the fool, which I did. She was just as sweet. And it ended up making me apologize for my foolishness when I learned better. We didn't have no money. But the little money that I made, she stayed at home with the children. And I didn't make a lot of money. But we kept within our means. That was important for the peace of the house. I don't like no white man at my door telling me that I owe him money. And brother, if you want somebody to take your manhood quick, just get in a lot of debt and can't meet the payment. And see how that white man or black man or whoever you owe will cut you down. They start talking nasty to you. That take away your manhood. I told my wife when we first got married, I said, baby, I don't like debt. So whatever we cannot afford to buy cash, we'll just save. 
I know I wanted a nice brand new bedroom set, but I didn't want no white man coming to dump me out the bed <laughs> when I couldn't make the notes. So I just worked and saved my money. And I went to a used place secondhand and bought it cash. I knew when it was in my house, it was mine and you can't take it. I saw a carpet in a place, it was for $20. It was not the best, but it was nice and I bought it. But I knew that when I put it down, couldn't nobody come in and take it. I wanted to preserve and protect the little manhood that Elijah Muhammad was building in me. And when you owe people money, brother, and you can't pay, you'll always be a punk. Because they'll punk you out when you can't pay your bills. The landlord will come and tell you, get out. How you gonna feel? You got a wife there looking at you and children and the landlord say, get the hell out. I'm bringing a sheriff to put you in the street and you a man and you got to stand there and watch a cracker take your clothes and your, your furniture and put it in the street. Ain't, ain't he making a punk out of you? Debt will do that to you, brother. That's why your desire should never go too far beyond your ability to pay for it. But the white man through television is constantly feeding your desire but never giving you the money to take care of your desire. So you're always paying, catching up. Don't do that to your husband. Keep him in a lot of debt. My wife could have told me, look, I ain't sleeping on no used bed. Do you hear me? And I would have told her, baby, well, we ain't sleeping on no bed at all then. <laughs> I'm not going to let no woman chump me like that. And don't threaten me. But that's it. I'm out of here. I'm not going to beat you. But you're not going to make no punk out of me. I'll never let that happen by the grace of God. I'm a man and I intend to be one, die one. But I know what I am. And I know a woman helped me to become that. And if you would just be smarter, even though you're frustrated, be smart. You need a man. You need a man in your life. So stop acting like you don't need a man. And change your attitude and change your disposition and change the way you speak. And you'll always have a man that will work for you if you know how to handle yourself and handle this man. By the grace of God, we can diminish this domestic violence. And now as I conclude, brothers, while she has to learn how to take care of us, you know, women, you think, need a lot of cuddling and all of that in, in that mushy, mushy stuff. They would much rather the bills be paid. Then the mushy stuff has more meaning. <laughs> what you say, sister? <laughs> sister said, teach you on that. Now, brothers, in my conclusion, we all think <clears throat> as men that, you know, sex is a major part of marriage. And when you're young at it, maybe so. Yeah. Excuse me. But sex has to take its place. And the priority is making a woman secure. That's the way you make her a Muslim. Make her safe. Make her feel secure. She's frustrated, brothers. She's hurting. And many of us don't really understand her pain like many of you don't understand the terrible 
pain that the black man is under. You think he just wants to be out on that corner talking and lollygagging. This man is a born producer, but he don't know how to do it himself. He must be shown. But by the same token, brothers, our wives are frustrated. And you know what? When they're home all day talking to children, can you imagine what that's like for a woman of high intelligence to be talking baby language to children all day long, and then when we come home, we ain't got no time to talk? Now you think, think, think about her. She can't wait for you to get home now. So we can have a, 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 a level conversation because she can talk down to the children, but she can talk up to any level we want to engage her on. She's your mate. But when we don't give her that outlet, the frustration in her builds and you see it manifest in the lack of care in the home and the lack of care for the children and the lack of order in the home, it's because she's frustrated. Then let's sit down and talk about why you're frustrated. And you know how you're not honest? None of us, really. What's the matter? Nothing. <laughs> but honey, you just ain't talking? I'm fine. And you know you ain't fine. But you don't know how to say to him what's really on your mind. So you owe nothing. But if he loves you, you can tell him. Sooner or later, you got to tell him. Even if it hurts, try to say it in the best way possible, but you got to tell him what's on your mind. And if you tell him, maybe he'll understand why you're so frustrated and he'll make some adjustments to help you out of that frustration. Then you can take better care of the home and the children and him. It's communication. Communication. Not body to body, but head to head. Most of us go home, we ain't got no communication. Turn the lights out, communication begins. <laughs> that kind of communication makes two animals. Two animals who engage each other because of heat, not because of the passion of love due to fulfillment of commitment and there is a difference now you can make a baby from heat but you can make a giant through the passion from fulfillment of duty make sense wouldn't it be better for us to talk first and then go to bed? What's on your mind? No, 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 no. I don't want you to think filthy. I don't want to think low because I'm not talking low. Talk properly to one another. Sometimes sisters we're so messed up when we come in you push the wrong button you get a very emotional response you didn't time it right you didn't time it right you may not have approached it right and if you're touching a very sensitive area you got to be more subtle than direct White folks are masters at subtleties. They drop all kind of subtle suggestions in your brain and before you know it, you're doing what they wanted you to do, but you think it's you that, that uh, uh, arranged it and it's them. That type of communication with one another, you begin to know 
what the person can stand and what they can't stand, and then you learn how to tell them what you want to tell them without shattering them. Do you think you can do that? You know you did it pretty good when you were courting. That's why you got married. Well, what is it about marriage that when you get married, you, you don't care anymore and you just talk to each other like dogs? Is it because what you have, you think you have? Can I tell you something? You're always in the process of getting. The moment you think you have it, you lost it. You didn't hear me. Male and female relationship is like going out after knowledge. The moment you think you've acquired it, that's when you lost it. Because when you go out in search of knowledge, you never get it and come home. You're always pursuing because knowledge is infinite and so is your mate. We are infinite when you're dealing with our heads. The possibilities are infinite. So never, ever, ever think you got him. You hear me, sister? Yes, sir. Brothers, never, ever, ever think you got her. Because when you stop the process that led you to her or him, you will begin from that moment to lose him. And I'm telling you, sisters, now this, this is hard, but I'm going to say it. I got to find the right way to say it. I don't want to hurt nobody. Sisters, your weight is germane to your happiness. When a man marries you and you are fine, I'm telling you, he wants to keep seeing you that way. Now, don't come up with no excuse. I had a baby. We all know that. But you see, when you think you got him, you relax. Before, if you got too much weight on, while you courting, you say, I'm going to get this weight off me. Work on this thing. And some of you sisters got so fanatic, you wanted to chisel your bodies so that it knock his eyes out. And it did. But then what happened? You unchiseled it. <laughs> and you know, you're beautiful, right? But, you know, men that marry women for beauty, man, they are always uptight. Because every time you find one beautiful, there's somebody more beautiful. And more beautiful. And more beautiful. And more beautiful. So it's got to be more than beauty that you're looking for in a woman. There's some special ingredient that each one of you have that that man hitches on to. And in order to hold him, you got to hold that ingredient. Hold it. Develop it. And I'm telling you, sisters, fat. <laughs> overweight. You're starting to lose it. Sisters, get a grip on your diets. Brothers, it's the same with a man. When a woman marries a man, she see what she like. All of a sudden, you, you content it now. Then the gut starts growing. And falling down over your knees. You rounding out things. And she's looking at you, and when you disrobe, she's disgusted with what she looks. <laughs> Fat, 
slob. Just look at him, look at him. And he got the nerve to want to be sexy. <laughs> she, 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 she'll lose all desire for you, brother. And you wonder why things ain't relating as they should. But he feel the same way about you. He may not want to tell you. But sisters, these stomachs all roll down. Damn, man. Get that thing together, you hear? I don't care if you're 60. Don't tell me that I'm old now. Uh-uh. Ain't no woman too old. Get yourself in order, and happiness will be yours, regardless of age, because your beauty, sisters, is really in your weight. And that's why Allah... In the Quran, he don't like obesity. He hates it. And you know what? In the nature of the man, is there. You start swelling up, blowing up. You can understand it when you're pregnant. But six years after you're pregnant, you're still blowing up. <laughs> Sisters, you got to keep his eye cool. You got to keep his eye on you. Isn't that where you want his attention? Well, you remember how it was when you had his attention? That's why they made that song, The Way We Were. <laughs> you got to get back. We're getting older, but we don't have to be just crazy. Get it all out of shape. Your fatness? <laughs> Let's get it off. Come on, brothers, all these big tired guts. Get it off. And I'm going to let you know straight up, I'm giving you six months. And any fat man that's a minister, he will not be around me. He's through. I don't want no big belly ministers. I want you looking mean, lean, trim, and ready. That's right. Now, I'm not going to say nothing, but I'm telling you, so help me Allah, if I'm live six months from now, all the ministers that walk with me, all the captains that walk with me will be lean and mean. If I got any fat man, he will be sitting down getting fatter. That he will not be walking with me, and the same with the sisters. I want everybody to start working on the fat. We got to go after fat like God went after darkness. God came into a universe of darkness and made it a universe of light. I came into a universe of fat. And we're going to make it a universe of lean, beautiful women and men who look good to themselves. And when you look good to you, you look good to others. And I don't care if nobody's pleased with you. You ought to work to be pleased with yourself. Huh? Will you do it? Now, I was asked to say something on engagements and courting, but the time is late. It's late, late. But sisters and brothers, no long engagements in Islam. Don't hang around no man no long time. And to make up his mind, well, we're going to get married two years from now. May the 6th. And <laughs> hey, look here, baby, if it take you that long to make up your mind, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Don't... Don't mess with me and have me on some string for two years. And brother, you're playing with fire because you can't be engaged to a woman 
that you are about to marry, know that she is about to be yours and you start looking to her as yours and before you know it, you're going to want to take what is yours Then you'll take one to five out in class F for fornication. You love her, you court short and hope to marry long. No long engagements here. Don't put no ring on her finger thinking that's going to hold her while you try to figure out what you want to do. Keep your ring in your pocket. When you put that ring on her, the date should be right there. Less than 90 days away. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Well, I guess that's it for tonight. But brothers and sisters, I certainly, I certainly, 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 certainly thank you so much you. for coming out to <laughs> So, thank you so much. Brothers and sisters, we're just going to have a few announcements and we'll be on our way. I, I really appreciate your staying with me this long. I enjoyed, um, I enjoy your company. You look so beautiful. All of the sisters and all of the brothers. We really have the making of something so wonderful here. The teaching is fine, isn't it? The manifestation of the teaching is better. I hope uh, within the next uh, six months, seriously, to challenge uh, us to be in the best physical shape of our lives. Yes, sir. I'm going to bring doctors in. I want us all thoroughly examined. As many times you, you, you don't take good care of yourselves. You really don't know what's wrong with yourselves. And as men particularly, uh, not, not particularly, but as men, we really need to know what our condition is and then we need to go to work to better that condition. Because we want you to live a long, long, long time. Because think how long you'll be dead. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So I, uh, <laughs> I really enjoy, I hate to leave you, but I know I have to go and I've really overstayed your time and mine, but I'm so happy to see you and I'm thankful to Allah for our assistant minister, uh, Brother Wali Muhammad, who is also the editor of the finest newspaper for black right. people anywhere in the world, <laughs> The Final Call. <laughs> And I want to say that I will turn you into the hands of a brother uh, minister who will ask for your charity. And I don't want you to run because we can't do all the things that need to be done except you aid us in so doing and your charitable contribution if you can afford it. Whatever you can afford to give. Always try to help us to help you to help yourselves so um i will turn you into the hands of brother uh, minister uh, wali who will close the meeting uh, out with prayer and again minister ishmael muhammad will be uh, back with us on uh, sunday and this friday we have study, and I don't know how many of you are engaged in the study, but study guide 18 is probably one of the most uh, thought-provoking right. study guides that I've had the privilege of uh, being guided to produce. 
And one day soon, God willing, I myself will come to you and address you on the serious nature of that study guide and why that study guide is so important for the future of us as a nation and a people. And of course, I have the help of Sister Tainetta Muhammad and others who are very scholarly in uh, the principles undergirding Study Guide 18. So I hope uh, you'll come out on Friday to be with Sister Ava Muhammad, on Saturday, sisters, for your class. On Sunday, Brother Ishmael Muhammad will be with you. And on Monday, we hope to see you at the FOI. Those brothers that missed the FOI this Monday, we had a wonderful time. And if you, I don't know whether it was recorded, what I said, it was, then every FOI should get that tape and go home and study. It's called Make All Men and Boys. Join the FOI and train them fast and make them brave fighters, willing at any time to give their lives for Allah's sake and righteousness. Get that tape. It's for men only. <laughs> May Allah bless you all and thank you. Assalamu alaikum. All praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, leaving us the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Praise be to Allah. Brothers and sisters, please be seated.